If you haven't noticed by now, there's a theme to these MonsterVerse films. And that theme is, humans are very stupid. Let's recount the stupid decisions so far in Godzilla. The humans wanted to kill Godzilla, and of course the Mutos, using nuclear bombs. I guess not knowing Godzilla and the Muto can eat radiation for breakfast. But it led to the Mutos taking the warheads and using it for their own nest in San Francisco. Without the assistance of four Brody and Godzilla, the humans stuck in San Francisco would have been fried sunny side up. And also the world would have been dealing with dozens of Muto offspring. In Carl Skull Island, the humans went to Skull Island, bombing away at Kong's home, causing an enraged monkey to kill half the humans, awakening Kong's swore enemies, the Skull Crawlers. Waking the big one. And if it wasn't for Kong waking up after being bombarded by Samuel Jackson, it could have been way worse. Way worse. Terribly worse. But in Godzilla King of Monsters, the humans get even dumber, stupider, idiotic, to the point Godzilla has to be questioning himself by now. But he has a duty to do. Enter Godzilla, King of Monsters. Everyone gather around. Viewers meet 2019's early summer blockbuster. Cause I think this movie came out in May. Godzilla King of Monsters, the third installment of the MonsterVerse. This film takes many elements from past Godzilla films, particularly the 1964 Ghidorah, the three-headed monster, a film that debuted the antagonist to the world when a three-headed dragon wanted to destroy civilization on Earth but was stopped by Godzilla, Mothra, and Rodan. Well, that's pretty much the film in a nutshell, but there's more to it than that. But skip 55 years later, the film's plot is no different from King of Monsters' plot, except for a few changes. This time around, I want to focus on the idiotic plot and its mastermind, Emma Russell. Similar to the Brody family in Godzilla, Emma and her family suffered a tragic loss in the family, indirectly caused by the Titans. Emma and her husband lost their son Andrew and Godzilla's prize match with the Mudos in San Francisco. Very sad. Very sad indeed. Losing a child. The pain of losing Andrew causes parents Emma and Mark to divorce, leaving their only child and daughter Madison in the middle of this fracas. Now, Emma and Mark are scientists because of plot, but Emma is a scientist for Monarch, studying the newest Titan to introduce Mothra, while Mark studies animal behavior and communication somewhere in some cold state in America. While both parents are the creators of the film's prized device, the Orca. Stupid ass thing. The Orca can communicate with the Titans, potentially control the Titans via sonar, I guess. Anyways, Emma sees Godzilla and the Titans as a force of nature and good. Her ex-husband on the other hand sees different. Mark hates Godzilla, blames the king for the loss of his son. His anger really should be towards those rabid ass mudos who destroyed San Francisco because they wanted to mate and nest. But anyways, as a side note, Mark has to go through his own character arc in this film. In the beginning, he wants nothing better to see the end of Godzilla and the Titans despite Dr. Zerozawa's pleas of Godzilla's importance on Earth. Well, like in all Godzilla film, hell breaks loose. King Ghidorah has been released onto the world and the human's first instinct is to kill. The US military decides to bomb both Godzilla and Ghidorah with the famed oxygen bomb or oxygen destroyer. Well, that plan failed and kind of succeeded. Well, it didn't kill Mole, Curly, and Larry over here. 
but it did put Godzilla on time up for some time. Mark receives his wish, but as soon as he understands the importance of Godzilla, after Ghidorah uses its alpha call to wake all the titans on Earth to cause utter destruction across the planet. Realizing Ghidorah is too dangerous and a dangerous force of nature that needs to be stopped in a close encounter with Godzilla, Mark realizes the need for Godzilla and changes his tune towards the end of the film. Well, that's pretty much it for Mark as far as character improvement and development because in the next film, he's just there. But Emma Russell, on the other hand, Emma Russell, on the other hand, this dumb dizzy broad follow in the same footsteps of Thanos and Ra's al Ghul. I want to save the Earth. I want to make it green. Nonsense. Well, her plan. Completing that mission by releasing the three amigos and other titans onto the world because the scourge of humans. Humans are reckless and destructive to Earth. You curly hair dumb fuck what the hell you think king Ghidorah was going to do become the new host of barty and friends where roll down as baby bop and tell stories to kids while handing out lollipops and singing you love me what's the matter with you you dumb dizzy broad this thing is a freaking force of nature king Ghidorah wants hell and as soon as it waves its wings around it creates storms that can wipe out cities one of the dumbest decisions since john hammond opened jurassic park Replenish the earth, save the earth, make the earth green BS. Well, I guess she learns this after the destruction of San Fran and Las Vegas. That both former cities have become part of nature. So releasing the titans on the world via using the orca to terraform the earth will save the earth in her calculations. Bad idea. And now you really pissed off Godzilla by releasing other hell on earth. The big lizard just wanted to smoke weed at his underwater mansion, but this dumb dizzy bro had other plans. Well, now that the Titans are on Earth, tearing up the joint, Emma really thought she could save her, but in return, she really caused more Andrew problems to happen. Who knows how many kids lost their parents? Parents losing their kids in the destruction across the globe due to these Titans. Once again, the MonsterVerse shows you how dumb and ignorant humans are, thinking a monstrous evil as three-headed space dragon that's a lot of words right there was just gonna allow humans to coexist with it she should have figured that out when Ghidorah made mince meat of the monarch soldiers early in the film now instead of sins of the father we get sins of the mother because Emma's decision has caused a rift with her only child when you have weirdos in my comments talk about some Millie Bobby oh sorry I'm sorry I'm quoting Drake but Madison decides to use Orca to direct the Titans from destroying stuff but she comes face to face with the King Ghidorah himself. But lucky for Godzilla, come marching in like Stone Cold Steve Austin at WrestleMania. Are you kidding me? In the end, both parents realize they have to save their only child. But also Emma realizes in order for Godzilla to defeat Dragon Breath over here, she has to lead Ghidorah away from Godzilla in order for Godzilla to gather himself that he was dropped on his head by Ghidorah and for the other humans to escape. She takes the damaged Orca and drives away forcing King Ghidorah to chase her across Boston. Ghidorah catches up with her tossing her Humvee like paper before the alien dragon can turn her into ash. Well she just turned to ash anyway. Ghidorah catches up with her tossing her Humvee like paper before the alien dragon can turn her into ash. Godzilla gets nuclear, evaporating Ghidorah, the city of Boston and Emma. What a predictable redemption. At least she went out swinging. Some maniacs will see Emma's actions in King of Monsters as noble, I guess. Maybe, I don't know. But her actions are a perfect example of biting more than you can chew and thinking you know better. Emma's actions almost cost the end of her husband, daughter, Godzilla, and the world. I do give praise for how intimidating King Ghidorah was. The dragons, three different personalities representing each head in this film. First time we've seen the big dragon since 2004's Godzilla Final Wars. The monsters in this film were the best part. The humans were stupid, and for some, every... Oh, this burns me. This burns me a lot. 
For some reason, every time one of those monsters square off in the ring, the scene... Let's cut to humans. Let's cut to the humans. See what they doing. It's like, hey, I thought this was a film about Godzilla, not a bunch of humans with family problems. And this film is still the lowest grossing film in the MonsterVerse, despite Godzilla vs. Kong release in a weird time in human history. Now that Godzilla is the true king of monsters at the end of this film, he goes back to his underwater mansion to go smoke some kush. But there is one more titan on earth that didn't bow to him. Enter Godzilla vs. Kong. Godzilla will really start to question himself in his upcoming film.